Now that we have the basic simple coupling patterns of singlet, doublet, triplet, and so forth uh, in our heads and understood well, it's time to take a look at a couple of other aspects of these. One, the strength of the influence between coupled nuclei, and then multiple coupling patterns, what it means to have some of these more involved patterns show up in your NMR spectra. So a quick review. Coupled nuclei. Remember, two nuclei are said to be coupled to each other if the spin states available on one affect the spectrum of the other. Our most common example are hydrogens on adjacent carbons, but that is not the, certainly not the only example that of coupling patterns that we have seen, and certainly not all of them we will see. Now, to talk about the strength of uh, the, or the strength of the influence, this coupling influence, we're going to introduce a phrase called the coupling constant. It's usually symbolized by the big capital letter J in the NMR literature, and it simply is a measure of how, st how strongly coupled, how much of an influence one nucleus or group of nuclei has on another. And you know, it, it, the coupling constants can be you know, fairly large or can be virtually uh, unmeasurable. They're so small and most all points in between. So what we're going to do is take a look at three influences on the magnitude of a coupling constant. The first one, no surprise here, it follows directly from the previous module, is simply proximity. If two nuclei are fairly close to each other, they will likely be strongly coupled to each other, and the coupling constant will be reasonably large. And we'll see later that might mean 7 hertz or 10 hertz uh, in size. Not a huge influence, but enough that we can measure it. If nuclei are very far apart, the coupling constant might be so small that it's unmeasurable and they are just simply uh, not coupled. The most common example is what we refer to as three-bond coupling, or sometimes vicinal coupling. And it's the hydrogens on adjacent carbons, and we've seen plenty of examples of this. If I were to take this example molecule and simply separate the two uh, hydrogens on adjacent carbon, say by inserting an oxygen into the structure, now they are technically four bonds apart from each other, and that will greatly weaken the, the, uh, coupling, con or the coupling influence and make the coupling constant probably uh, so close to zero that uh, it's not measurable, even on even on today's more modern instruments. And so proximity is very definitely a strong influence on the magnitude of the coupling constant. A second influence is something called a dihedral angle. And remember, I've got my little friend the molecular model here, dihedral angle simply refers to the angle between I've marked here my hydrogens in red. The angle here, and you can have dihedral angles of zero, 90 degrees, Turn them all the way around, dihedral angle of 180 degrees. And remember, in a molecule that's freely rotating, you know, sing, free rotation about single bonds, the dihedral angle is constantly changing and going through all of its potential values. Now, technically, there is a relationship, it's called the Karplus relationship. And I'm not going to bother to derive or give the equation for it, but I will put up a graphic that shows the re relationship. And it basically says that the coupling constant is influenced by the size of the dihedral angle. And surprisingly enough, the coupling constants tend to be at their largest values when the dihedral angle is either zero or 180 degrees, and it reaches a minimum value when the dihedral angle is at 90 degrees. And so if you have you know, free rotation about this single bond, the coupling constant that we will measure is really an average of all the possible dihedral angles where the coupling constant would be larger, smaller, larger, smaller, larger, smaller, and, you know, constantly changing. 
this graphic here uh, that I, I took from a website at the University of Wisconsin nicely summarizes this by basically saying the coupling constant in a three bond coupling situation like this with free rotation and only sigma bonds between the two protons is an average of all the possible coupling constants. And they give this nice example where the average comes out to about seven hertz. And indeed, that is what we measure fairly often. That's a very common coupling constant for what are referred to sometimes as aliphatic systems. Uh, no, uh, only single bonds between the hydrogens, the hydrogens three bonds apart from each other. And finally, the other influence, and sometimes a fairly significant one, is the nature of the bonds between the coupled nuclei. We've talked about, you know, if the nuclei are connected to each other only by sigma bonds, if they're three bonds apart, commonly seven hertz coupling constant. Put a pi system in between, however, a double bond or even a triple bond, and the coupling constants can be quite different, and in fact, often are quite a bit larger. A common example we run across are alkenes. If you look at this, you know, this, you know, outline of the structure of a molecule here, um, looking at proton A for a moment here uh, on the double bond, it actually is going to be coupled to two other protons, uh, uh, protons B and C. But remember, in a double bond, there is no free rotation here. These two protons B and C are locked into position. Proton B is trans to proton A, and that will actually lead to one of the largest proton-proton proton coupling constants we measure. Uh, somewhere between 16 and 18 hertz are often seen here. Proton C is cis to proton A, and that will lead to a fairly large coupling constant as well, uh, sometimes around uh, 8 to 12 hertz, average value somewhere around 10. There is even potentially a coupling constant, a two bond vicinal coupling constant, it would be called, between protons B and C. They tend to be fairly small, uh, zero hertz, sometimes all the way up to around two hertz, but they can often be measured. And this uh, graphic from the same source as before uh, gives just a cute little summary of some of the uh, basic coupling constants in various situations that we see. To show how a coupling constant our coupling constant actually gets measured. Here is our good old standard again, methyl ethyl ketone. Now what I focused in here is on the methyl triplet. Remember, this molecule has an ethyl group in it. This CH3 group here, the methyl, uh, is, is right next to a CH2. It has two neighboring protons. We split into a classic one to two to one triplet here it is, right around just under 1 ppm, exactly the chemical shift we would expect to see for something like this. Now, instead of letting the instrument label these peaks with their ppm values, you know, 0.9 ppm or so, um, look at this one where I've switched it to actually labeling hertz. Now remember, on our particular instrument that we use here, uh, 1 ppm is 400 hertz, so you notice these values are just under uh, 400. But if you look at any two adjacent values here, if you take the, the value in hertz for these two peaks and subtract them, that is where the 7.2 coupling constant we measure here comes from. And the same thing happens if you go from the center peak over to the right instead of to the left. That is how we measure coupling constants, the, 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 you know, how far apart the parts of a, of a uh, pattern like this, of a coupling pattern like the 1 2 1 triplet uh, really are. And here is the classic vicinal 3 bond 7 hertz coupling constant that we were talking about just a moment ago. And now the multiple coupling patterns. If you look at a, a molecule with a group in it like this, a propyl group, looking at the center CH2 group for a moment here, again, the one we're observing, labeled proton A, it technically has one, two, three, four, five. It has five neighbors, and so it would appear in a proton spectrum as a sextet. But that has one key assumption behind it, and that is the coupling constant J A B and the coupling constant J A to C is, are roughly equal to each other, and they likely are here. 
They are visinal coupling constants, only freely rotating sigma bonds in between them, and so 7 hertz is right around average. So they probably are equal to each other, and sure enough, that is where sex, a sextet type pattern would come from. But it is possible to have two, proton, or two groups of protons like this near each other with quite different coupling constants. And to see an example of that, um, let's look at this sample molecule. Here's our friend the alkene again, and again we're focusing on hydrogen A. But now it's under, it, it is being influenced by two neighbors. But here's the kicker. These two neighbors are going to have quite different coupling constants. The cis coupling constant around 10 hertz, the trans coupling constant around 16 hertz or so. If you have two or more coupling influences on a nucleus being observed, here proton A, then this is a situation where you're going to get the multiple coupling patterns. This one will produce a doublet of doublets. I'm going to try something a little different now because I want to draw out uh, what's going to be called the coupling tree for this particular situation that we were looking at just a moment ago. You could do it by computer graphics and everything, and you'll probably see several examples of it, but on occasion I think there really is value in watching some schmuck like myself draw it out by hand. So what I've got here is the structure with everything labeled, and then I have my two coupling constants, my J, A, B trans coupling constant, the large one at 16 hertz, J, A, C, the cis coupling constant at 10 hertz, and we're going to draw out manually what the coupling pattern would look like for this particular situation. I like using lined paper to do this because it is very convenient, and you'll see why in just a moment. What I've done is I've marked a chemical shift position of hydrogen A here in the center. Whether this is 5 ppm or 6 ppm, I don't really care. There is its chemical shift position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the larger coupling constant influence first, JAB. And Proton B is going to cause proton A to split into a doublet. And so it's going to split the hydrogen A signal into two, and it's going to be a total of 16 hertz wide. So watch how I do this. I'm going to start at the center position and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to mark that position, eight hertz to the right. Start at the center and go to the left, 8 hertz. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there's the position to the left. I'm even going to take my ruler and mark these just because I like nice straight lines in these types of diagrams. Yes, I am that way. Draw it out even left a hole there. These two are 16 hertz wide. And there is the doublet from J, A to B. Now, what you do to take into account the second but very different coupling constant, J, A, C, Proton C is going to cause proton A to be a doublet. It's not going to be nearly as wide a doublet, only 10 hertz, as the doublet from JAB. So here's how you treat it. You basically are going to take this position here, and now you're going to create a second doublet 10 hertz wide. You're going to start at this position and go 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's say right about there. 5 hertz to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 hertz to the left. Connecting things up once again. Those two are J, are, excuse me, 10 hertz apart. I don't really need a J right there. Be gone, J. There's that one. 
Now what I did on this branch, I do exactly the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five to the right. One, two, three, four, five to the left. Connect everything up. Ten hertz apart. And there it is. And now, this is the doublet from JAC. We're going to create a doublet of doublets. And now, I draw in the peaks, so I have a kind of an image of what this pattern will look like. Baseline, one peak, 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 peak. I drew them all same relative height, because these are all doublets, and so, you know, the relative heights are all one to one. There is a very lovely uh, doublet of doublets. And we have seen patterns sort of like this in some of the spectra that we've already taken a look at. To see one other example, I'm going to show you the origins of a doublet of triplet type pattern. We're going to take a look at one more of these. The other, the other slightly more complicated example we talked about a moment ago. Hydrogen A again, under the influence of two coupling patterns, trans to hydrogen B, we'll give it a 16 hertz coupling constant. Uh, here, we're three bonds away to hydrogen, group of hydrogens C, and I'm going to give them a 5 hertz coupling constant, considerably smaller than the trans coupling constant. And we're going to take a look at the pattern that is going to result here. So remember, from hydro hydrogen A will be split into a doublet by hydrogen B, but into a triplet by hydrogen C. So what we do is we, again, take the biggest coupling constant first, and that is going to be the doublet from hydrogen B, the 16 hertz doublet. As before, I have the center position here, the chemical shift of hydrogen A marked, and I, to make a doublet, I go of 16 hertz, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One branch will be there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The second branch will be here. Connect those up nice and pretty. And there is the classic 16 hertz trans cross a double bond coupling constant. Now I'm going to consider the hydro uh, influence of the group of hydrogens, hydrogens C. Now they're going to cause a triplet of 5 hertz. Remember triplets with their three peaks do have a peak in the dead center. So to do the triplet what I need to do is actually mark once again the center position here, and each branch of the triplet will be five hertz apart. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There are going to be then three parts of this triplet, okay? And I'm even trying to give kind of the one to two to one feel of the classic triplet. Connecting things up here. A little connection there. And here. Okay. And there is our triplet. And if you count it, 5 hertz here. 5 hertz there. Classic 5 hertz coupling constant triplet, 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Again, whatever I did on this branch, I do on this branch. So away we go again. We mark the center position. Now this is a triplet. And then we count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And connecting everything up nice and pretty once again. Oh, that wasn't very pretty, but you know. Oh, well, we'll just let that one go. Triplet one to two to one. Five hertz. Five hertz. Now, the overall pattern, a triplet. Peak, taller peak, 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 taller peak, peak. The doublet of 